Hey, everybody. Welcome to this free edition of our Trader Use Group Weekly Roundup for the trading week ending April 14th, 2023. I'm Preston Brent. Thanks for tuning in. This week's theme is, well, it's going to be a market tug of war. More on that in just one minute. Let's just kind of take a look at where the markets come from this past week and what we can see um, moving forward. If we take a look at the markets, everybody was in the green for the week. Some just barely like NASDAQ. Uh, but year-to-date, still very healthy. NASDAQ's up a strong 15.83%. You can see in the upper right corner, the P.E. ratio, uh, forward P.E. ratio is about 18.88. I still believe that's a little bit higher than it needs to be. Uh, but we'll probably see that re-rated as we get through Q1 and then Q2 earning guidance. Um, dividend yield, S&P at 1.67. 10-year Treasury, 3.5, about. So the 10-year treasury is still taking over the dividend yield, but the earnings yield uh, for the S&P at 5.32% finally came in the real yield at a little over a half a percent, which means inflation came down dramatically uh, in this latest reading, which I'll talk about in one second. So the S&P yield is now a net positive to inflation. Um, current VIX had a, a very strong down week. Uh, finished down 17.07. Last week, it finished the week at 18.52. So it was down about a little over almost 8% for the week. And then we can see the best performing sector, financials. Obviously, with financials um, coming in, the markets were relatively quiet all week, but volume picked up as we got into Friday when we saw Chase, Wells Fargo, City, um, JP Morgan, Chase, Wells Fargo, City, all kicking out, blowing out their earnings. All three um, top their consensus uh, estimates, which obviously were helped with a lot of money moving from regional banks, smaller regional banks uh, into their uh, domain. You know, that was pretty much following the collapse last month of Silicon Valley Bank and New York-based Signature Bank. So uh, we did see a little bit of a benefit there for the banking sector, so that did help. Um, but we are expecting for Q1, um, fact set is showing that the S&P probably earnings will contract about six and a half percent year over year in uh, Q1. You can see the best performing sector for the week obviously was banks. The worst real estate, the best for the year is financial services at 23.76 percent through uh, this past Friday and financials bringing up the rear at 3.38 percent, obviously with the regional bank uh, uh, failure and collapse of the uh, largest bank since, what, a couple of decades. So that did, you know, put a punishing hurt on the banking sector. Now, we do have this coming week, uh, well, this past week, one of the other things, as I mentioned earlier, was CPI, right? Um, stocks kind of moved up when CPI uh, came in below expectations, which is good. It came in at about 5%. Remember, it's at 6% in February. So that's the slowest pace since May of 2021. However, core CPI, if you take out food and energy, which I don't know why they do, but they do, they call it core. That's what the feds follow. It came in at 5.6%. So still very sticky. Um, but the markets kind of pull back after they heard from uh, the regional Fed Bank president, um, Barkin, who basically said there's still more work to do. And a lot of the feds are saying that. Hence, that's where we get that tug of war. Because we've got right now the Fed fund futures is pricing in about a 46% chance that the Fed fund rate the end of this year will be at least 50 basis points less than where we are right now. All right. That's it. That's two 25 basis point rate hikes. However, the Fed say otherwise. They're saying they're going to stick to their guns, keep inflate, um, the rates up higher. So that's the tug of war that the markets are currently under right now. Bond. Bond market versus the Fed. I will give you a hint that typically the bond markets usually win. The Feds haven't gotten it right yet. So who's to believe that they're going to get it right through the end of this year? Um, meanwhile, we did get March retail sales. They fell more than expected. Uh, but we did get uh, the consumer sentiment from the University of Mi Michigan's preliminary gauge, and it, and it rose up just a little bit. Okay, so all in all, kind of a mixed week. The markets really haven't gone anywhere, and we're kind of topping out at the highs that we had back in um, that strong month of January. I'll show you the charts in just one minute. Meanwhile, if we go over to Europe, 
take a look at what happened in Europe, you can see everybody was in the green in Europe from the Euro stocks, FTSE, CAC 40, DAX, all in the green. Year to date, almost all of them are double digit with the exception of uh, Great Britain, the FTSE, the London index. You can see that the Euro stocks, is 50 of the largest companies across Europe, up 15.7%, 16% in France, 13.5% for the DAX, all very strong. Um, I think some of the recession fears there are pulling back just a little bit, although there's probably going to be some more rate hikes over in Europe. They're a little bit slower than the Feds in hiking the rates, but that's going to further strengthen the euro versus the U.S. dollar. And for you um, uh, folks that are listening to our weekend, my weekend blog, you know that we I love the euro um, and we'll add another currency to it as well uh, in just one second. But the euro is really good against the U.S. dollar. Meanwhile, the Eurozone in industrial production rose about 1.5%, um, 2% year over year, but it's up, um, which was basically stronger than expected, right? We did see in Europe, uh, March retail sales fall a little bit, as they did here in the U.S., um, but the IMF is predicting, uh, if we switch over to Great Britain, they're predicting that the U.K. economy is going to shrink 30 basis points in 2023, so that would put the UK squarely in, in a recessionary uh, uh, front. We'll see if that comes true or not. And then, of course, if we move across the pond to the Asian markets, you can see Japan up strong for the week year to date, very healthy, 9.919%. That's very strong for the Nikkei. Um, this past week, we got uh, Kazel Ueda sworn in as the new Bank of Japan uh, governor. And even at his first press conference, he issued a series of dovish remarks, did throw a couple of hawkish statements out there. But for our for our members, um, I'll go through Sunday, another great currency trade that we're going to take a look at in addition to our euro that should make a lot of sense. Meanwhile, the IMF revised downward their projection for Japan's uh, 2023 economic growth to 1.3 from 1.8 exports down just a little bit. Uh, Less investment in um, business capital over in Japan was the primary reason IMF uh, revised their projections for 2023 down a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that fares. Then, of course, if we go over to China and uh, Hong Kong, you can see China and Hong Kong both in the green weekly and year to date as well. Um, in Japan, or excuse me, in China, inflation pulled back just a little bit as it is, as we're seeing everywhere all over the planet. Their CPI rose about 70 basis points in March from a year earlier, but that was down from a 1% rise the previous month. So it is on the right footing, and the rate of change is coming down steadily. However, their exports kind of surprised the markets and rose 14.8% in March. Remember, they're just now coming out of their zero COVID policy stance from December of this past year. And as I tell our members, it's going to take at least six months for them, for the consumer to really get comfortable to get out. Uh, out and about because they've been locked down over two and a half years. Okay, so um, we're getting some strong numbers out of China, but it's not going to be like it used to be. They're having some issues over there with uh, consumer spending. They're trying to get more consumers to spend. Um, and really, of the only two countries on the planet that are putting money into the economy right now, well, I could probably add three and say the U.S. also, but China and Japan are putting money into the economy. So money likes money. And so far, that's kind of what we're seeing right now. What I want to do is switch the screen over real quick and just show you a couple of key charts that we're looking at. Members will obviously spend more time on some trading opportunities and where, we, where I see the markets next um, over the next month or two. But you can see here, this is a chart of the daily chart of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. You can see that looks like almost like a doji. Typically, when you get these kind of candles, it means we're going to pull back a little bit. In fact, my Elliott Wave count shows that we're probably going to pull back um, over the next two or three weeks uh, going into the Fed rate hike. And I believe there are, the markets are already pricing in over a 60% chance we'll see another 25 basis point rate hike. That's a quarter of a point on May 3rd. That's when they meet. But I think their words and the tone that they're going to use is going to show that we're either at the end or near near the end of their rate hikes. Of course, they're going to throw out there that they're data dependent and blah, blah, blah. But the market interpretation of his comments at his press conference and their policy statement, I suspect, 
will be more dovish than uh, um, bearish, which should see a little bit more of a pop up uh, through the month of May. But I think interim leading up to that, the odds favor a little bit more of a, a drawdown. And you can see here that we were at this same level here after the January move up. All right. I mean, essentially, we're not going anywhere. I've done this with our members, and sometimes you just have to step back a little bit, right? And if I really move it out, okay, and just kind of show you the, the market, and this goes back to the summer of last year when we had a strong July and August move before we started coming back down again. But this is why a lot of uh, uh, hedge funds and other institutional funds have kind of just gone into the T-bill and the short duration um, uh, uh, treasury bill or treasury note market. If you look at it, the markets have just done this, right? And that's if, and if we just go back in time, that is a key fib node right there. And you can see that node, you know, is just you didn't get too far above it, stopped right at it, slightly below, stopped right at it, and now we're right there again. So where are we going to go from here? Well, I don't think we're going to get too much elevation. Probably the odds favor a little bit of a pullback here before it determines what the feds are going to do on May 3rd. Remember, it's all in the voice and the tone and what he says and the words chosen. And they're going to dissect this thing, every individual word, and compare it to the prior statements to see what he's going to say. That would be Boom Boom Powell, Jerome Powell. We call him uh, Power Ranger Boom Boom Powell. Uh, and that's going to drive where we're going to go and whether we take out this prior pivot high made August of last year sitting at 4,300. Remember, most analysts don't have a forecast of an end of year S&P over 4,300. I would say 80% of them are generally under the 4,300, 4,350 area. There are a few outliers that are up at this level up here, but none of them basically are up in this area. They're usually right down in this area, right down here. Some of them that are more bearish are down at these levels down here like that. So that still puts us in a range, okay? And I'm gonna take you to another chart, which is the SPX uh, cash index. And I just wanted to show you, it looks like we've been moving up. You know, we got a low and a higher low, and we're, we're kind of being squeezed in here. And if I show you the SPX, this goes out right here. This is a weekly chart. This goes back to the all-time highs in the SPX that were made um, in uh, early January on 2022, right around 48.12. And you can see that we've just, we've been still in a down market. Now, if you were to look at this chart and I would say, are you bullish or bearish for getting what the asset is, in this case, the SPX, uh, or the time frame, and you'd say, would you wanna be bullish or bearish? You'd probably say, I'll, I'll trade it neutral, but I'm still suspect. And that's kind of where the market is. Now, this was my forecast for last year which basically topped off the pre-pandemic high over here uh, in February of 2020 before we fell off the, the table. So I said, we're probably going to come down and retest that. Remember, this big um, impulse move here was all because they put $4 trillion back into the market. And then we gave it all up, came right back to where we started from again, which is very typical when you step out in time and just look at the markets. And you can see these blue bars moving up. We've had huge rallies. Every single one of them have fell, right? Uh, now, if we just zoom in here again, um, here was a rally of 516 points in the SPX, 12.5%. Here's one 689 points, 18.9%. Here's one at 19%. Right. And now that's kind of where we're sitting right now. Um, and, and again, the 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 markets and you can see this downward thrust when we finally broke north of this trend line that was back in January this year, this big move up. But obviously, it's such a big trend line. We came back down and tested it again. And now we're up testing this upslope and trend line, which is not as strong as this downslope and trend line. But the big area I want you to focus on is our FIB note, 0.236 at 4196.57. Remember, this is the futures market, so I'm sorry, the SPX market. So that 4200, when you hear a lot of folks talking on TV, a lot of analysts saying at 4200, I'll probably look at selling. That's kind of been the historical uh, area where the markets either hold up or sell, depending on how you're approaching it. You can see back over here in 2021, 
we literally stayed there from April all the way through to June. You know, three months right here. Remember, this is a weekly chart. So we stayed there for three months. And then coming back down again, we supported it for a few weeks. Then we gave it up. And then once we gave it up back over here in April of 2022, we've had a hell of a time trying to close back up above it. We've only had two closes, really, uh, since um, April of uh, April 18th of 2022. We've only had two weeks where we closed above that key level. Every other one, we've been below it. So obviously, this is a very strong level. You can see this dashed line here at 43.25. That could be a very strong resistance zone because that was the prior pivot high that we made in August of last year. All right. Now, all of these trades um, uh, for our members, we'll go into some great opportunities and timing for swing trades and shorter term trades. Longer term, I do believe that we're going to have a little bit more of a pullback here. Um, and if we do get a recession from this point right here, because uh, we closed out um, the day right here, or we closed out the, the, this week right here on the SPX at 41.37, right? So if I take 41.37 and then I multiply it, typically a soft recession sees about 5 to 10%. Let's call it 8%. We'll split the difference. Um, and let's say we come back 8%. So just to give you an idea, I'm just going to do a tracking on it. Let's say we close down 8%. All right, just to give you an idea of a soft recession, right around that level, right about there. So right around 3,800, that would be that, that level right down here. And that would put us right around the 38 fib note. So if we have a soft recession, that's where we will stop. There's a prior pivot low right there, these areas right here. So that's why it's a zone for me. Um, so that level, a hard recession gives us about another 15 to 20 percent. Remember, we're already down from the peak up here. OK, so if we come down, let's say let's split the difference right in this area here. It puts us down around 34, 3300. So these are the levels that should we get into a recession. That's where we're going, even a soft recession. OK, so this is what we're going to be watching for as an opportunity trade. Um, as we move forward in time and we'll be able to pick it up and for our members, we'll be able to jump in on it. If you're not a member, I highly encourage you to come in because we're doing well. We, we had uh, great returns last year and we got ways to trade these markets that take some of the risk out of it, out of the trade. Right? And if you got portfolio margin, uh, if you don't know what portfolio margin is, then you don't have it. For those that do have portfolio margin, we have a great way to trade these markets a lot more safely, utilizing your uh, margin the right way. Okay. All right. So that's kind of what I'm seeing right here. I'm seeing near term, the higher probability of pulling back just a little bit. Um, that would be kind of what I'm, what I'm, what I'm uh, uh, focused on. If we come down here and we look at um, the VIX, you can see with the VIX uh, now uh, how it's moved down. And we haven't been down this low in quite some time just to show you and let's just go back to last year you can see this zone right here let me just zoom in just a little bit more you can see where we are right down at this level here the last time we were down here for just a few days was back in december of 2021 going into that big move up in january before we we hit the peak and then we just or, or we gave it up right so we don't stay down here very long in a choppy market. Now, this is a considered a choppy market zone, even at 17. Um, but 17 is still, if you look at a long-term average, this is just a 200-day moving average. You can see the VIX is at 23 on a 200-day moving average. I've got to put uh, a three-year average on here as well. I'm going to modify my chart and show that. And even a 50-day, it's at 20. So we're below the 50 and the 200 moving average. So that's why I believe we're due for a little bit of a kick higher involved before we come back down again. And that kick higher will lead us into uh, the Fed uh, rate, 25 basis point rate hike on May 3rd uh, as we go through some of the earnings here. Right. So and, and this week, we've got some pretty good earnings coming out. Uh, members, I'll go through a little bit more detail with you what to expect. But this is a little bit about what I'm seeing, guys. And of course, if we come down here and look at treasuries and the bond market, you can see it came down hard. Interest rates up um, a pretty good little bit on uh, Friday. You can see here that we made new highs in the bond market 
which meant interest rates are lower, have been moving lower. And this is the divergence between the bond market and the feds. If we look at the 10 year rate, you can see it's been moving down off the highs, right? Um, and then it just it bottomed out down here. It's probably going to chop around here. But the rates really were at the high at 4.33 back on um, um, uh, November of last year or October of last year. And then we started that big rally uh, as the markets have just basically made uh, lower lows. But you could see here we took out the previous pivot high, but then it fell off the table again when we started having sovereign or we have started having those regional bank problems with SVB Bank and, and uh, Bank in New York, Signature Bank. So that dropped the rates down. I think the rates are going to find a normal area here. It may move up just a little bit. But I think longer term, the bond market is probably going to be correct and the rates are going to be coming down. But understand why the bond market is forecasting a soft recession towards the end of this year. That's why they're betting that the feds are going to be forced to reduce rates. Feds right now are not on board with that plan. Okay. Uh, currencies members, I'll go into detail on some currency plays for you guys. They're great trades to take. I'll show you how we do them. Uh, just go through some setups for you guys. I think you guys will enjoy it Sunday evening. Like I said, if you're not a member, I highly encourage you to come in and play with us because we're doing well. Um, and then, of course, if you look at metals and gold, gold's doing what I said it would do. Um, I told uh, some of our members, they were asking me about it. I said I would be shorting gold up here, expect to move lower, a consolidation down here, and then gold's going to move higher again. All right. I've got to adjust my gold chart. But you can see gold's up nicely. We're near the all-time highs up here at 2078.80. All right, it's that was a high made in 20, uh, uh, 2022, but that's that's the all time highs, and then away we go back to the downside. But I think it's going to consolidate down here. It's an Elliott wave three, which would suggest a four pullback, and then we make another high here. So I think gold is going to close higher than this at the end of the year, but getting there is going to require a little bit of a consolidation and a pullback. So still bullish gold, but you could play this pullback, this counter trend move, I believe. All right. That would be kind of how I'm looking at the, the gold market. And then, of course, energy oil. We've got a great way to trade oil. Our members are just making money really nicely in the oil markets. Um, again, I got to adjust the chart a little bit, but you can see oil um, is in the green year to date, but not by much. Right. But you can see these big moves up, closing, filling the gap in these moves. Um, and I think it's going to it's going to have a hard time getting much higher. I know a lot of Analysts think oil is going to move up over 100 a barrel. I don't see that just yet. I see a little bit of a pullback, a consolidation, like gold, and another move higher, but not really screaming higher, at least what the charts are showing right now. Okay. And then, of course, if we look at nat gas, we made a killing. I mean, a killing in nat gas. Way back over here, we shorted nat gas. It was a low hanging fruit trade for our members. I got them set up in that trade over there, this trade right here. Some of our members made some really good money on these on these moves lower. All right. That was my original target. Uh, we came right through my target. The timing of the target was good because they said it would happen sometime um, in first quarter of this year. And it actually happened. Uh, uh, we went right through that area into January, into February. And then we came down lower. I said it would probably come up and retest and roll over. And that's exactly what it's done. I think down at this level here, you've already missed the trade. I think the, the easier trade is, is to do a counter move up chop is kind of the way I would configure that um, in the energy markets right now. Okay. All right, everybody. That's a real quick summation of where the markets are. Members will spend a lot more time on this uh, Sunday evening at eight o'clock. So I will see you then. Otherwise, everybody have a great uh, weekend. Uh, for those of us down here in South Florida, the sun is out and the drying and the water removal begins. Have a great weekend, everybody. Ciao.